Hi, this is Jill Fahrenbacher from Inhabitat, and I'm here today with Janine Benius, the founder of Biomimicry 3.8, and we're going to talk to her about how biomimicry can help solve some of the world's most pressing problems. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you came up with the idea of biomimicry? I know that um, you, maybe you're, you're sort of synonymous with this idea. You coined the term mm -hmm. biomimicry, right? It occurred to me, is anybody trying to consciously emulate the way nature lives here so gracefully on the planet? Is there a field? Is there a discipline that does this? And this was back in, in 1990 I started to collect. And at that point it was in small little journals. Now the first one was mimicking leaves in order to come up with better solar cells. But at that point, there really wasn't a field you know, the, in which the people could go into this, that, that biologists and designers were not consciously working together at the design table to create new products or processes. Now they are, actually. So what does biomimicry 3.8 mean? 3.8 stands for 3.8 billion years. That's how long life has been on Earth. And for us, okay. it's bringing 3.8 billion years of experience to redesigning our world. What do you think are some of the most pressing problems that can be solved by biomimicry right now? You know, I think um, obviously the climate change is an enormous and multi-forked problem. Um, but whether you're looking at new energy sources can certainly be uh, solved by biomimicry or ways to conserve energy, ways to conserve resources, ways to reduce the toxins that we have. A great example from a group called Flow, and this is at Caltech. It's a group of students who came up with this one. They studied how fish move in schools. And as mm. fish move in schools, the, the fish in the beginning of the, or in the front of the school actually throw off little vortices in the water as they move, as their, their sinuous movements. The ones behind them actually curve their body around those vortices and get flung upstream. Kind of a dra they're drafting, you know, wow. and they get an energy push so what they did was they said, what if, what if we could redo wind farms? Because right now we have these gigantic wind farms and we try to keep the horizontal axis wind turbines as far away from each other as possible. Because we see that turbulence not as a good thing, but as a negative thing. They said, maybe it is a good thing. So they, they took vertical axis wind turbines and put them as close as possible together, put them basically in a school, in a very small space. They found that they were getting 10 times more wind power because as the first windmills turned, they would begin to move the air, which would start the, the other windmills turning even before the wind came to them. That's incredible. Yeah. So that kind of, that kind of thinking of, of how would a school of fish inspire a new kind of wind farm that you could possibly use at the top of buildings in the city, for instance, um, that's, that's the kind of breakthrough thinking uh, that, we, that we're getting from biomimicry.